The Hundred Thousand Sons of St. Louis was the popular name for a French army mobilized in 1823 by the Bourbon King of France, Louis XVIII, to help the Spanish royalists restore King Ferdinand VII of Spain to the absolute power of which he had been deprived during the liberal triennium. Despite the name of the actual number of troops was around 60,000, the force comprised some five army corps and was led by Duke of Angoulême, the son of the future King Charles X of France. Context. In 1822, Ferdinand VII applied the terms of the Congress of Vienna, lobbied for the assistance of the other absolute monarchs of Europe. In the process joining the Holy Alliance formed by Russia, Prussia, Austria and France to restore absolutism. In France, the ultra-royalists pressured Louis XVIII to intervene. To temper their counter-revolutionary ardor, the Duc de Richelieu deployed troops along the Pyrenees Mountains along the France-Spain border, charging them with halting the spread of Spanish liberalism and the yellow fever from encroaching into France. In September 1822 this cordon sanitaire became an observation corps and then very quickly transformed itself into a military expedition. France considers intervention. The Holy Alliance refused Ferdinand's request for help. But the Quadruple Alliance at the Congress of Vienna in October 1822 gave France a mandate to intervene and restore the Spanish monarchy. On the 22nd of January 1823, a secret treaty was signed at the Congress of Verona, allowing France to invade Spain to restore Ferdinand VII as an absolute monarch. With this agreement from the Holy Alliance, on 28 January 1823 Louis XVIII announced that a hundred thousand Frenchmen are ready to march, invoking the name of St. Louis, to safeguard the throne of Spain for a grandson of Henry IV of France. At the end of February, France's Chambres voted an extraordinary grant for the expedition. Chateaubriand and the ultra-royalists rejoiced. The royal army was going to prove its bravery and devotion in the face of Spanish liberals, fighting for the glory of the Bourbon monarchy. The new prime minister, Joseph de Villa, intended to oppose the war. The operation's cost was excessive, the army's organization was defective and the troops' loyalty was uncertain. The superintendent of the military was unable to assure logistic support for the expedition's 95,000 men concentrated in the bases Pyrenees and the lands with 20,000 horses and 96 artillery pieces. To remedy his doubts, he had to consult the munitions supplier Ivrid who quickly concluded that marches in Spain were as favorable to his own interests as to those of the army, even if they would be to the detriment of the public treasury. The French force command structure The organization of the expedition's command structure opposed many problems. Pro-Bourbon commanders had to be given the chance to fully exercise the roles they had so recently been given by the restored French monarchy without compromising the army's loyalty or efficiency. The solutions was to give the secondary commands to former émigrés and vendéants and the primary ones to former generals of the Revolution and First Empire. The Duc d'Angoulême, son of Charles X, was made commander-in-chief of the ARME Acut des Pyrénées, despite his lack of military experience but he agreed to hold it as a merely honorary role overseeing only the political direction of the expedition, leaving its military direction to his major general Guilleminet, a tried and tested general of the First Empire. Four of the five army corps were placed under generals who had fought for Napoleon, Marshal Audinot, Dr. Reggio, General Molitor, Marshal Bon Adrian Gino de Monsi, Dr. Conigliano and General Etienne Tardif de Pomeroux de Bordesul. The Prince of Hohenlohe commanded the Third Corps, the least trusted of the five, with only two divisions and 16,000. Loyalty The expedition was made up of regiments in which many of the officers, NCOs and men had been marked by memories of the Napoleonic Wars and so were disposed more kindly towards the liberals than the French and Spanish, Bourbons. The liberals hoped to dissuade them from fighting, for monks, against liberty. 
Villa was worried at their propaganda in bars and billets, where a song by Bear Ranger spread throughout March and April inciting the soldiers to mutiny. Course. Outbreak on 6 April, the doubts of some and the illusions of others dispersed. On the banks of the Bidassoa, 500 liberal French and Piedmontese men faced off against the forward positions of the 9th Light Infantry Regiment. Brandishing a tricolor flag and singing La Marseillaise, they incited the soldiers not to cross the frontier. The king's infantrymen hesitated until General Louis Vallon rushed to them and ordered them to open fire. Several of the demonstrators were killed and the others dispersed. Many of them joined Englishmen under Colonel Robert Thomas Wilson, Belgians under Janssens and other French or Italian volunteers to form a liberal legion and a squadron of Liberty Lances to fight beside the Spanish constitutional forces. The following day, on 7 April, the 100,000 Sons of St. Louis, under the king's nephew Louis Antoine, Duke of Angoulême entered Spain without opposition from the constitutional government's forces and with the support of the middle classes and part of the urban population. French advance in the north, Hohenlohe's third corps forced General Murillo to retreat before rallying his troops. The French were left in control of Navarre, the Asturias and Galicia, however, lacking siege equipment. They were unable to blockade the towns where the liberals continued to resist for several more months. The city of Coruna only surrendered on 21 August, Pamplona on 16 September, and San Sebastian on 27 September. To the east and southeast, Molitor pushed back General Ballesteros into Aragon, pursuing him as far as Murcia and Granada, winning an engagement at Campillo de Arenas on 28 July and forcing his surrender on 4 August. At JAEQ-10, he defeated the final columns of Rafael Rigo, who was captured by the absolutists on 15 September and hanged in Madrid on 7 November, two days before the fall of Alicante. In Catalonia, Monsi managed to quell General Miner's regular and guerrilla forces, with Barcelona only surrendering on 2 November. Andalusian front more decisive operations spread across Andalusia, since this was the site of Cadiz, transformed into the constitutionalists' provisional capital and thus the French forces' main strategic objective. It contained the Cortes and the imprisoned king and was defended by a garrison of 14,000 men. At first Rigo, then the generals La Bisbal, Quirogar and Alava led the action. Access to the city was protected by the batteries of Fort Santa Catalina and Fort San Sebastian to the west, Fort Santa Petra to the east and above all by the fortified peninsula of Tricadero, where Colonel Garces positioned 1,700 men and 50 guns. Under the command of General Bordesul, soon joined by the Duc d'Angle Me and Gila Minot, the infantry of Generals Ormont, Obit and Goujon, the cavalry of Foisic Latour, the artillery of Tiello and the engineers under Dode de la Brunerie took up positions before Cadiz from mid-July, forced to use several naval divisions for surveillance of Spain's Atlantic and Mediterranean ports and coasts. The French Navy was only able to spare a small squadron of ten ships under Counter Admiral Hamlam to blockade the city. This proved too small a force for Hamlam to succeed in this mission, and so on the 27th of August he was replaced by Counter Admiral Des Rotors, then by Du Perre, who only arrived on the 17th of September with meager reinforcements. Conclusion On 31 August the French infantry assaulted Fuerta de Trocadero and at the cost of 35 killed and 110 wounded successfully captured it, turning its powerful guns towards Cadiz. On 20 September Fort Sancti Petri fell in its turn in a combined army-navy operation. On 23 September the guns of the Sancti Petri and Trocadero forts and of Dupere's fleet bombarded the town and on 28 the constitutionalists adjudged. The town lost. Thus the Cortes decided to dissolve itself, give back absolute power to Ferdinand VII and hand him over to the French.
On 30 September Cadiz surrendered and on 3 October more than 4,600 French troops landed at its port. The French army fired its last shots in Spain at the start of November. On 5 November, the Duc d'Angleme left Madrid and re-entered France on 23 November, leaving behind an occupying force of 45,000 men under the command of Beaumont. Spain was then progressively evacuated, and was only fully completed in 1828. Unexpectedly, Ferdinand took ruthless revenge on his opponents, revoked the 1812 constitution and restored absolute monarchy to Spain. Consequences The liberals thus negotiated their return in exchange for Ferdinand's oath to respect the Spanish laws, he accepted. However, on 1 October 1823, feeling bolstered by French forces, Ferdinand broke his oath and again repealed the constitution of Cadiz and declared null and void all the acts and measures of the liberal government. This war also seriously disturbed Spanish efforts to crush the independence struggles in Latin America. The last forces in South America were defeated in the Battle of Ayacucho in 1824. Chateaubriand, foreign minister in France's Ville le government, contrasted the expedition's success with France's failure in the Peninsular War. Illusions during the Spanish Civil War, the Carabineros of Republican Spain were nicknamed the Hundred Thousand Sons of Negron. It is ironic that this nickname was adopted since they were, on the side opposing the Nationalists, who were supported by the Carlists, the group which sought to restore the House of Bourbon Palma to the Spanish throne. Bibliography in French Encyclopédie Universalis, Paris, Volume 18, 2000, Larousse, Tome 1, 2, 3, Paris, 1998, Caron, Jean-Claude, La France de 1815-1848, Paris, Armand Collin, Carl, Cursus, 2004, 193p, Corvigia, André, Histoire Militaire de la France, de 1715-1871, Tome 2 Paris, Presses Universitaires de France, Quadrige, Collection, 1998, 627p, Demier, Francis, La France du XIXE 1814-1914, Soy, 2000, 606p, Dolphy, Anne, Histoire de la Espagne de 1814 and Osgers, Le délire fi de la modernisation, Paris, Armand Collin, 128, Collection, 2005, 127p, Durozel, Jean-Baptiste, L. Europe de 1815 and Osgers, Vie politique et relation internationale, Paris, Presses Universitaires de France, Nouvelle Clio, Collection, 1967, 363p, Garrigues, Jean, Le Combrade, Philippe, La France au 19 e siècle, 1814-1914, Paris, Armand Collin, Campus, Collection, 2004, 191p, Lever, Evelyn, Louis XVIII, Paris, Fayard, 1998, 597p, Jean Sarrel, Un homme d'acute tat espagnol, Martinez de la Rosa, in Spanish Miguel Artola Gallego, La España de Fernando VII, Jonathan Harris, Los Escritos de Codification de Jeremy Bentham y su Recepción en el Primer Liberalismo Español, T. Acutelos, Revista Iberoamericana de Estudios Utilitaristas 8, 9-29. W. Ramirez de Villa Arusha, Fernando VII, Rey Constitucional, Historia Diplomatica de España de 1828-1823, in English Raymond Carr, Spain 1808-1975, Charles W. Ferenbach, Moderados and Exaltados. The Liberal Opposition to Ferdinand VII, 1814-1823, Hispanic American Historical Review 50, 52-69, Jonathan Harris, An English Utilitarian Looks at Spanish-American Independence, Jeremy Bentham's Rid Yourselves of Ultramaria, The Americas 53, 217-33,